Getting started with Docker Scout and Jenkins. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.414.2. I've also set up an example job. The link to the sample repository associated with that job is down in the description. Now, what is Docker Scout? Docker Scout is a set of software supply chain features integrated into Docker's user interfaces and more importantly for us, the command line interface or the CLI. So this is a tool that we can use to check on the container images that we're either creating or using. Now on the agent that I already have connected to my Jenkins controller, I have installed the Docker Scout CLI on it. Now, if you take a look at the information here, you have to have Docker installed, and then you install Docker Scout as a CLI plugin for Docker. So once you get it installed, you do all the configurations necessary. When you run it, you'll be able to run it by referencing it by Docker space Scout. Now, you don't have to install the CLI. You can also run Docker Scout as a container. But in my example, just to keep it simple, I have it installed on the agent as a binary. Now let's take a look at my sample repository. And we're gonna be morphing this over time. So once you actually see this, you'll see the final state of what we're doing. What we have here at the very beginning is we have two environment variables. I have a DH creds, which we'll get into in just a moment, and I have image to scan. I'm picking an older version of the Golang image to be able to see the different CVEs that are available in that image. First off, we're gonna make sure that Docker Scout is installed and what version it's running, and then we're also gonna double check Docker version. So that's the very first stage. Next up, I'm going to output the help for Docker Scout. Next, we're gonna be logging into Docker Hub. Now, why do we need to log into Docker Hub? In order to be able to scan images using Docker Scout, you have to be logged into Docker Hub. So I've set up a stage to go ahead and do that login. Next, I'm gonna pull in the image that I want to scan. In this case, it's gonna be Golang 111 Alpine. Then I'm going to go ahead and run the command Docker Scout CVEs against that image. We'll see the different options that we have for Docker Scout from the earlier command Docker Scout help. After that, we're gonna go ahead and run a help for Scout CVEs because there's actually even more options that we're gonna use there. There's also another command after the CVEs that you can run for recommendations to resolve any of the issues it finds. And then finally, in the post always, we're doing a Docker logout. We log in earlier here in this stage. Now we're doing a logout at the very end, no matter what happens. So at this point, let's go over and run our job for Docker Scout. We'll go into it and click on build now. As the job starts up, we can go ahead and double check. We do our clone. Our Docker Scout version at time of recording is 108. Our Docker versions are at 24.0.6. We do Docker Scout help. Now let's take a look at a few of the commands at the very top. We've already talked about CVEs and recommendations. These are the two primary commands that we're gonna be using within our Jenkins files. Now there's a lot of other commands you can take a look at, but for us again, CVEs and recommendations. CVEs display the CVEs identified in a software artifact and recommendations display available base image updates and remediation recommendations. So those two are fine for right now. Let's go ahead and go down to our next stage, which is we're logging in to Docker Hub. We were successfully logged in. We pull the image and then we do the scan. Docker Scout CVEs Golang 1110 Alpine. We can see that everything was scanned. We found one vulnerable package with one vulnerability. We get an overview and then we get to see the packages and vulnerabilities. In this case, it's a critical and it was fixed in 1119, but again, we're running a very old version, so it's a critical. Now, you'll also notice that low, medium, and high are showed here, but they're all zeros. And then finally, in the output from Docker Scout CVEs, it gives you the command to run if you want to see the recommendations. Next up, we'll take a look at Docker Scout CVEs help. Well, what are the different options that we have here? Let's go ahead and scroll down and take a look at the different flags that we have. The two that we're most interested in are exit code right here, and also only severity. There's a lot of different options, but in our case today, these are the two options that we're gonna take a look at. Now, first off, if we find any vulnerabilities at all, we want to go ahead and have the job fail. The example is we're getting ready to use an image somewhere within our production environment, and we want to make sure that it passes the Docker Scout world. Well, in the case that we have right now, everything's successful all the time. In fact, if we go to the bottom, what we'll see here is we are successful in running the job, but that's not what we want. If we find any vulnerabilities, we want the job to fail. So let's go ahead and go back over into our Jenkins file. Let's edit this file and let's make a change to our CVEs. And I'm going to say dash dash exit dash code. I could have also used the short code of dash E, but I prefer to spell it out. So exit code. Let's go ahead and commit this change, commit directly to the main branch and commit the changes. 
Now, before we run the job, let's go ahead and finish taking a look at the output. So if we take a look at the rest of our help, we'll see, again, a lot of different options here. And there's so also some other examples shown here at the bottom. We also ran our recommendations. If we take a look at the recommendations, the base image was already latest. So in theory, we just need to rebuild the image using a newer base image. When this was built, it was built using Alpine Latest. So we need to run again to get the latest Alpine Latest in order to get the best possible final image for Golang. And at the very end, we do our Docker logout. Let's go ahead and go back up to Docker Scout and let's run the build again with our exit code. And let's watch what happens within the stage view as we approach and get into scan the image. As we're in scan the image, what we expect to happen is that image to fail. And if we take a look at the output for the scan the image stage, we can see that it failed from the red. So we expected this job to fail because we did put in the exit code option to fail. So if we take a look at the overall view of this, job run number two failed. Now the other option that we wanted to use was only severity. So let's go back over into our Jenkins file. Let's modify this. So for this example, what we want to do is we want to have the only severity of high. And then if we only find any highs, then the exit code will click in and fail the job. So let's go ahead and add in our only severity and we only want to look for highs. Now think back to what the actual run was the first time, it was actually a critical. So at this point, since we're not gonna find any highs, we would expect this job to complete successfully. Let's go ahead and click on commit changes, go directly to main branch. Let's go ahead and go back over into our controller and let's run this job one more time. As the job runs, we'll go into the console output, we'll scan the same image, and we'll see here at the very end that we finished successfully. Well, let's go back up into when we were doing the actual scan. What we can see here are Docker Scout CVE's exit code only severity highs. We did not find any vulnerable packages because remember, the only vulnerable package was considered a critical, not a high. So since we didn't find any highs, we successfully scanned that image and therefore our job completed successfully. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on the subscribe button, and then ring that bell and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video.